Hey, this is Rob, and I'm just going to show you what we went through yesterday, right? We have an icon that says fab in the fab lab, but you can also type fab from the command line. I'm going to choose an STL file and choose our milling machine, which is the MDX20, and hit make. From here, I can just load my STL file from my drive. And there it is. Uh, you can see that it's, it took a little while because it's, uh, it has a lot of triangles. Um, this isn't actually the model we used yesterday. Let me, let me try again. I think if we stick with the one that we were using yesterday, that'd be better. So there it is. That's really quick because there's not a lot of triangles. Uh, but it is the wrong orientation. We're looking at it in the, uh, with the Z orientation facing us. So we actually want the, probably the Y. And uh, at this point, I want to make sure that millimeters is my unit. If it was 25.4 here, that would mean it was inches. And you can switch that by choosing either here, inches, or millimeters. Uh, this is really more for this process because it's preset for all of these settings. But it does affect this field right here. So I want to make sure it's on millimeters, or at least that this says 1 here. I'll hit Make PNG. There's my uh, tile. And uh, we don't have to touch this setting so that's one to ignore um, and then you know you just choose one of the presets millimeter eighth inch bit wax is the material rough and uh, I should be able to just just hit make path using the defaults but some of the settings are uh, diameter here is the uh, diameter of the end mill we don't need to touch offsets overlap is um, how much overlap there is between one pass and the next so that means it's going to go over 25 percent of the previous cut the higher that number is the more uh, the higher the uh, the resolution I is I guess if you if you are using a ball end mill that's important and um, then uh, error we can leave alone top intensity and bottom intensity say that the top of the model is white and the bottom would be black this is actually just dark gray so that's telling me that it doesn't go all the way through uh, and these are the corresponding um, measurements. So the top of the model is zero millimeters and the bottom of the model is negative 25. So we designed our model so that it actually goes all the way to the uh, bottom of the wax. So there's the bottom of the wax. But you could have designed it differently and, and uh, then maybe this number would be different. Make sure you pay attention to this number though because it filled this in automatically. If it filled it in incorrectly you could be going further than the material or it may, what if it said minus five here your model would look squashed when it actually got carved so just make sure that's actually for our case negative 25 uh, but it should be the actual height of your model it's drawing that from over here cut depth is one millimeter um, I'm gonna say that the problem we had wasn't actually a problem the roughing cut I think because it was actually jumping down one millimeter each time it was basically skipping some of the steps that's why it looked kind of weird when we took it out I'm not gonna worry about it because we really did kind of uh, speed things up by changing the overlap and also uh, this cut depth is really just meant to like tear away material so my hope was that we could just do the roughing pass and we'd be done but this value right here really is the problem because it's really just kind of saying one millimeter isn't a lot of resolution that's that's a huge area to jump down every time so that's the difference between the rough cut and the finish cut so this is where we ran into a problem this is very important the wax um, the, you know the the actual uh, model got carved out of the wax in the middle of the chunk of wax and the reason for that was the default here I think was set to 30 and 30 so this is actually you know we set the Z height of the bit by making it touch the wax that becomes zero uh, and then we don't touch the up and down buttons anymore and that's how we we have our zero position in the Z orientation in the X and Y it's actually these two numbers so uh, if I hit move here, it will move the machine to 20 millimeters from the left, 20 millimeters from the, from the front of the wax, and that becomes zero, zero from now on. Uh, when I hit make RML, the file is actually, and I don't think I can hit send it, no, but um, I'm not, I'm at my own laptop and I don't have the machine connected. Um, but if you hit send it, it's actually basing all of its measurements off of this position as zero, zero. So this would actually start carving this model 20 millimeters uh, from the corner, right, in both directions. So what happened yesterday was 
I made some changes here. I said, okay, go to two and two, and it moved. And then I said, oh, go to 150 so I can put the, or 175 so I can put the bit in. Okay, now I'm done with that. Go back to two and two, or three and three, whatever I had. But I never hit make RML again. So it was still, uh, when I hit send, it was still sending this old file with these numbers and these minimum, maximum uh, from, uh, sorry, these minimum XY from earlier. So. What you really need to do is just before you're gonna hit send it, you need to make sure that you hit make RML. So that will use whatever these values are, which is its current position, wherever the machine is sitting right now, if you change these and hit move. Um, when you hit make RML, it uses that and bases all of its measurements off of that point. So super important, uh, if I put 30 and 30 here, and I make RML, and then I go back and move the machine to three and three and hit send it, you have to realize that it's sending a file from uh, the last time I hit make RML, which was the old numbers here. Hopefully that makes sense, but the important thing to know is if you move the machine with, this, with these numbers, make sure you make RML before sending, and that will uh, update the file that it's creating to send to the machine. Uh, other than that, I think we're all set in here. I, the only other thing is the finishing pass. Uh, like I said, you can make this jump over to 175 millimeters. That gives you a place where you can take the bit out, the eighth inch end mill, and put in the 16th inch end mill. Um, you put it up really far so it doesn't hit the wax when it moves back over, and then go back over to uh, the position where you were, where you zeroed the eighth inch bit, and then um, loosen loosen the screw so that it falls down and hits the wax. And now that one is zeroed out in the Z axis. Uh, then we can go back here and hit again millimeters, eighth inch, wax, finish. And you could just use these settings. Uh, make sure you choose ball end. And I think, um, first of all, we have to change the, uh, the bit, which I think is not sure offhand. You have to look uh, at your notes to see what the diameter is of a, um, in millimeters of an eighth inch. Um, Bit. Let's see. So one eighth inch. Sorry, one sixteenth inch to millimeters. It's one five eight seven five. So one five eight seven five. Um, that's really the only number that you have to change. But overlap of 0.5 is going to leave a pretty kind of gnarly texture on there. So let me hit make path so we can see what this looks like. And again, you can see in the background, it's working here in the terminal window. And there it is. So there's actually, uh, it doesn't really, you can't really tell here, but it's pretty significantly open. The, the, uh, the lines going x, y um, are, are pretty far apart. So if I put something like 0.9 here and make path again, it'll probably take quite a while to do it. You can see down here, but it's going to be a lot finer. Now the last thing is before you do the finishing pass, I would recommend going in to uh, the the uh, file manager here, looking in the home folder, and finding that PNG that it that is referencing from over here, and uh, open this up in the GIMP, which is just double clicking on it. GIMP will open, and I think changing this dark color here to white in GIMP will. Um, I can even show you that right now, is just to be complete here. Um, that will allow us to avoid uh, making a finishing pass on this trough going around. So I'm going to show you right here how I did it in, in uh, class. I hit Control B and that brings up the toolbox. I'll use the eyedropper and choose this white color and then I'll use the paint bucket and fill this dark area and then I can just go to File Overwrite. And that's it. I could quit from here. Uh, I'm just hitting Control Q and discarding changes. Um, so if I try it again, I'll try Make Path again. You can see now it's really fine. It's uh, this is going to be a lot of passes because it's overlapping so much, and um, we can see what the time would be at that point. I should have just checked it now because it'll be a lot less time once we get rid of this um, outer uh, trough. So let's see what this looks like. There's the countdown.
Okay, so it's the same model, it just got rid of the trough, and you can see there's the origin, so obviously it's skipping part of the model here. And if I hit make RML, uh, so this is going to take 53 minutes to do that. And that's because it's 0.9 here. If I change that to 0.1, it'll make this path really quickly, uh, and you'll see that the time goes down a lot, but the, uh, the resolution will also go down. So that's only going to take five minutes kind of corresponds, right? This is about a tenth of the time, it's about a tenth of the time, uh, or sorry, about a tenth of the overlap, somewhere near there. So uh, that's about it. If you have any questions, let me know. Also, I will tell you one other thing that you should have in your notes. If the computer has been rebooted and you hit send it, uh, it may not do anything. And here, which I'll show you the error, if you look, it says that, uh, this one says could not open port, and it shows this USB port. But um, on the Fab Lab computer, I haven't quite resolved this yet, but I can um, this week probably. It'll say that you don't have permission to the USB port. So I'm going to give you the command right now just to um, type in at a terminal. So you'd, you'd click on uh, the terminal icon, looks like that, and it'll open a terminal window. This is the command sudo change mode 777, and then uh, whatever it says down there. So that's dev tty usb zero caps matter. If you type this, it'll ask for a password and you'll have to, uh, it won't ask you for your fingerprint, but it'll ask you for a password and you'll have to ask the lab monitor to fill that in. After that, you'll be able to hit send it. So it's a permissions thing that I haven't quite fixed yet, but um, that'll be resolved next week probably. In the meantime, that's the command and you could just type that in at a terminal and then just call the monitor, the lab monitor over. They know the password. It's the same password that uh, they use on all the computers there. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.